Here are seven tips for organizing your team that are going to be especially helpful if you work in a small team of developers, or even if you're a solo developer working on your own project. First tip is to find users. Especially as a small team, you need to collect feedback about what you're working on and you need as many different viewpoints as possible so you can take better decisions. I've seen so many teams spend a ton of money and time on a project with zero users and then ultimately fail. I've actually been part of a few of these projects in the past. If you're working on a project for a customer, make sure you get feedback early and regularly. If you're working on your own project, find some users by posting on social media like LinkedIn or Reddit. If you're building something nice, you'll find users no problem. If you can't find any users, you should probably choose another project to work on. The second tip is to document everything. Document your code, your architecture, set up instructions, etc. It's helpful for others or your future self who may need to understand or maintain your code. You don't have to do all of that by hand though. You can pick libraries and tools that make this easy for you. For example, if you use FastAPI for your backend, it also generates a documentation website for you automatically. Also, you need to keep track of your projects, processes, and workflows. The tool that my team and I are using for this is Notion, and they're also kindly sponsoring this video. Notion is a very powerful project management solution that seamlessly integrates with your documents, notes, and wikis. And by consolidating tools, your team can remove silos and manage projects with more speed and clarity. I love Notion. For two years already, it's the main hub for everything we do at Arian Code. We use it as a wiki to manage my complete YouTube production schedule. We use it to write content for my online courses. We create pages with it, such as our media kit that we can share with others and much more. We also use Notion to document our workflows and processes by defining SOPs or standard operating procedures. Here's an example of how I built such an SOP for email list scrubbing. Because it's documented, it's easy for us to go through the process and clean up the email list a couple of times per year. That way, I avoid filling up people's email inboxes with information that they're not interested in. For software development specifically, SOPs could cover code style, testing procedures, branching strategies for version control, handling bug reports, how meetings are being organized, and so on. For managing projects, I've been using simple Kanban style boards that just have a couple of categories like planning, in progress, done or not now. That's my favorite category. But now Notion has released a big update called Notion Projects, which really takes this to the next level. For example, there's now great support for automated sprints, issue tracking and GitHub pull request integration. Another really cool thing that they added is more AI support for managing your projects. And I already know I'm going to use this a ton. For example, you can use this to let AI automatically create a summary of what's in a page. And the cool thing is this actually updates dynamically if you change the contents of the page itself. Notion allows us to keep everything under a single roof so we don't have to switch between tools all the time. In my opinion, it's the perfect tool for smaller development teams. It's lightweight, very customizable, so you can improve and extend things as you grow. Get started using Notion projects for free and unlock the power of AI for only $10 a month at the link below. My third tip is to automate everything. Automation is really important, especially as a small team, since you have limited resources. What has really helped me is to think about automating things slightly before you actually need them. And this actually really leads to a mindset change. So whenever I think about tasks that I need to do, projects that I'm working on, I'm always thinking, hey, are there aspects of this that I can automate? so that I don't have to do the work manually. And it really saves me a lot of time by doing that consistently. Now, in software development, of course, obvious examples are things like automating testing, which helps you catch bugs early, speed up your development, and is going to increase your confidence when you're refactoring your code. And Python provides lots of libraries for this, such as PyTest, Unitest, Hypothesis for property-based testing. If you want to learn more about that, by the way, it's really cool this video here. For example, you could write unit tests for each function in your data analysis pipeline. And yes, testing is also important when you're a data scientist, because otherwise you might draw conclusions based on the wrong analysis. And of course, there's many other types of tests you can write, such as integration tests for your API endpoints to make sure they return the correct responses, interact with your data, layer the way that you expect them to. Or you could automate deployments, 
CI-CD pipelines automatically build, test, deploy a code whenever you push a change to a repository. I use GitHub Actions for that a lot. We deploy to many different types of cloud resources like storage, cloud functions, or even a full-on Kubernetes cluster. So what kind of things do you actually automate as a developer? Do you have any tips? Let me know in the comments. Tip number four is to define clear roles and responsibilities. In a small team, or even as a single developer, you have to define roles and responsibilities. You can do that per area of expertise, front-end, back-end, data analysis, etc. Or you can assign different parts of the application or feature to different people, like authentication, payment, and so on. When you're a solo developer, this is more about planning when you will work on each thing. It's still important though to think about roles and responsibility because that way you're being at least explicit about what needs to be done. And you're not just diving randomly into the code and doing whatever you like doing the most. For example, I'm working on a new product now, mostly on my own, but I did take the time to think about the different things that I needed to do before I started coding. I'll share more about that product soon, by the way. And finally, remember that team organization isn't static. Especially in a small team, you need to adapt and change quickly. And fortunately, as a small team, that's typically a bit easier to do than when you have a complex team working with many stakeholders. The fifth tip is regular communication. Now I know there are people who say that all meetings are evil, but in my opinion, you really need things like regular stand-ups or check-ins to coordinate your work. Be careful though, because meetings are very expensive. They take everyone away from their deep work. Now we're a small team. We have regular short catch-up meetings, not daily, just to make sure we're not wasting each other's time. But most of our communication actually takes place via Microsoft Teams, or you can use Slack or Discord or anything similar to that. And we have a rule that emails are forbidden for internal communication. We're always experimenting with this though. I don't know, maybe we'll move the whole team over to Discord at some point because I do like Discord a lot. By the way, if you haven't joined my free Discord server, you can join via this link. It's a really great community. And who knows, in a year or so, maybe you will probably all be wearing Apple Vision Pro headsets. I do hope it runs Docker though. Tip number six is to follow coding standards and conduct code reviews. That of course goes for any team, but as a small team, you also need to decide on those things, coding standards, style. Don't spend too much time on this though. You don't have to reinvent the wheel. For Python, just follow PEP8 and use black to auto format your code. At least that's what I do. Or if you're working with JavaScript or TypeScript, just use Prettier and be done. Next to that, you might wanna write some general guidelines for when to split up code, naming things, organizing files and folders, etc and write that down in SOP. Code reviews are great. They help you improve the quality of your code as a team, but also there, especially for a small team, you have to make sure that they're lightweight. In most cases, you have to keep in mind that the goal is not to write perfect code because you're gonna throw out or refactor most of it anyway. Just make sure it's easy to read, keep things simple and consistent. You could even decide as a team that you're going to introduce themes, like for example, one week code reviews are going to focus on stability and the next week you're going to focus on style and then another week you're going to focus on performance etc etc so that you're always looking at someone's code slightly differently and everybody's learning along the way by the way if you want to become better at doing code reviews check out my free workshop on code diagnosis at the link below. If you're a solo developer you're not part of the team there's still ways for you to get some feedback for example Assuming you have friends, you could ask a friend if they can give you some feedback on your code. And I'm also assuming that that friend is going to have a software development background. That's pretty specific actually. Or you could use an AI tool, a fake friend like ChatGPT to actually give you some feedback. ChatGPT can actually give you some useful feedback on code style and design. My last tip is to keep learning and improving your skills. Now, getting your code reviewed by someone else helps a lot already, or just simply asking for general feedback from your teammates. But learning also involves discovering new Python libraries, better data analysis techniques, better ways to design and implement APIs. For example, you might discover a great Python library called FastAPI that can speed up dramatically your API development. If you spend some time learning about it and then decide to use it in your projects, it's gonna give you the ability to develop APIs faster than before. A great way to start learning about fast API is by watching this video next, where I explain in a nutshell how it works, show you step-by-step -step how to build a complete API with a practical code example. Thanks for watching and see you next week.